This is One on One. There he is, Adam Bryant, author of uh, The Corner Office, Indispensable and Unexpected Lessons from CEOs on How to Lead and Succeed. Also, Senior Features Editor, little newspaper called The New York Times. Good to see you, Adam. Thanks, Steve. I've been reading you for a lot of years. It's great. And enjoying uh, your Corner Office column and learning from it. Thank you for being with us. No, thank you. Um, how the heck did you ever get into this whole thing? You, you always wanted to write? Uh, sure. I, you know, started newspapers pretty often, did a detour through magazines, came back to the New York Times. How'd the New York Times thing happen for you? Uh, right at the outset, do you mean? Or, well, or the corner I, office? By the way, I, well, no, just being at the New York Times in and of itself, I always find it fascinating. Sure. No, I, I was working at a medium-sized paper in the Hudson Valley, um, and I found out about a freelance position in the Detroit Bureau. Um, so I was married at the time, one year old, we loaded up the U-Haul, I took a pay cut, no benefits, went out to Detroit, um, was there for six months and got an offer from the Wall Street Journal, which gave me leverage to get hired by the Times. So mm. took a chance and it paid off. Interesting, the corner office, for those of you who don't know it, you can read uh, Adam's stuff every Sunday in the New York Times. One of um, uh, our friends and longtime uh, underwriters, uh, Annette Catino, you ac actually happened to feature her yeah. a few months back. A fascinating leader. Yep. Um, speaks her mind, let's just say. And, and, and again, one of those people who you can learn a lot from. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious as to how the corner office column came about. Sure, it's a great question. Um, I was a business reporter for many years, had interviewed a lot of CEOs. Um, and what dawned on me over time was that the business press almost always interviews CEOs as strategists. Essentially, what's the competitive landscape? Um, how do you plan to zig while everybody else zags? Um, but I just found the more time I spent with CEOs, the more I found myself just wanting to ask them, how do you do what you do? Uh, and then as I became a manager myself and discovered how hard it is, <laughs> um, I also wanted to ask them, how did you learn to do what you do? Because I think people have this notion of CEOs are born leaders. You know, From the time they were in diapers, they knew how to do it. Um, and I didn't really think that was quite accurate. Um, so I thought if there was some way to get at the learning curve there too. So the very simple what if is, what if I sat down with CEOs and literally never asked them a single question about their company, their product, their strategy, and just asked them open-ended questions about important leadership lessons. Um, how do you hire? What questions do you ask? I always ask the CEOs that. And I keep hearing fascinating answers. I hear something different almost every week. And again, talk about the learning part. For me, um, in, in your book, mm -hmm. the one thing clipping your articles every week, and uh, there's, there's nothing like, I, would, I write for another paper, mm -hmm. um, Star Ledger, a column on leadership and communication. There's nothing like someone saying, I clipped your article out and using it, and I'm sure you yeah. hear that a lot more. Yeah. Um, and turning it into this book has been great, because I told you, I turned to a section, I went you know, on getting ready for the show, I turned to the section called uh, Be a uh, Coach, Not a Critic. And, and I'm sure this isn't just about me, it's about all of us who are crazy enough to think we can lead and manage. And I said to you that short version is this, things go wrong in every organization, mistakes happen, and mm -hmm. I wish I were more of a coach and less of a critic, mm -hmm. meaning so quick to who screwed up, why did this happen, and just, and I know all of our producers who are saying they're shaking their heads right now or looking at each other and they know what I'm talking about. Why is it that so many of us have such a hard time being more of that coach and why do we why do we come down so tough? Well, I think managing people is hard for the first thing. As, as a manager, you're responsible. Um, so I think it's very easy to get frustrated, especially if something goes badly and we've got to fix this fast. Um, but it's, it, it does take a lot of patience and sort of mindfulness to remember that you are like the coach of a team. Um, and it's not just somebody dropped a ball in a play to you know, use the sports metaphor. It's, you know, what about the discussions before and how do you prepare for the game? I think if uh, managers take that approach that you know they're a football coach or coach of any sports team, I think that kind of changes their perspective because it's really about how do you make your individual players, employees better, um, and then how do you get everybody to work together as a team? And I think that approach is kind of rare, but um, I, I think it's also very clarifying and simplifies things. It's interesting, as I, you went through this, we talked about the five qualities, and there's so many more qualities, and it's more complicated. Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's not, but you said five qualities. 
Passionate curiosity. Give me 30 seconds on each. Passionate curiosity. Uh, basic, really engage with the world, you know, curious about people, their backstories, how things work, um, how things can be made to work better. I like the phrase passionate curiosity because it's sort of greater than the sum of its parts. We've met people who are passionate, not very curious. People who are curious, not necessarily passionate. But I do think that those two words kind of capture this quality that I saw in a lot of the CEOs I've interviewed. And by the way, we're talking about uh, folks' qualities to succeed as a CEO, as a leader, and, and we're talking to Adam Bryan. You can catch his uh, corner office column every Sunday in the New York Times. Uh, battle-hardened confidence. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between battle-hardened confidence, Adam, and just, com I'm confident, bordering on cockiness? Right, well, the battle-hardened is key that there's a track record here. You've, you've, you've faced down a lot of adversity. Um, and you've developed this kind of track record of success. So you know what you're capable of because at different times in our lives, we're all gonna be put on the hot seat. Um, and it's that, that quiet confidence, I've been in a situation like this before, I know I'll get through it. Um, and that's the thing that really separates a lot of people. It's also, frankly, why hiring is so hard because somebody might look great on paper, <laughs> six months into the job, you give them a tough task and they fold or some people rise to the occasion um, and that's that you know, quality that really gets at that sort of, you know, I know I can get through this. There's a big difference between um, people who are confident for absolutely no reason at all. I don't know why they're confident <laughs> versus battle hardened confidence. How about this one? A simple mindset. Mm -hmm. Go. Um, simple fact that essentially we all have worlds of data at our fingertips, courtesy of the internet. And I think it's a, it's a really key skill of CEOs to be able to simplify um, whatever the issue is down to one or two or three core ideas. Um, you don't want a CEO standing up in front of their troops and saying, here's 15 things you have to remember, <laughs> our key strategic yeah. objectives. Big data objectives. dump. Yeah, it's here's the three things that we're gonna focus on this year or two. Um, at moments like that, CEOs really earn their paycheck. Let's pick one of these, uh, team smarts and mm -hmm. fearlessness. Yeah, pick team. Go ahead. Team smarts is sort of the organizational equivalent of street smarts, and we all know what that is. Um, essentially, you know where the soft levers of power are. Um, you, you know who to talk to to get things done. You understand the sort of connective tissue of politics of an organization. It also means just having good um, antenna for body language, reading people, um, team dynamics in meetings. Uh, and finally, fearlessness, um, sort of as it, as it implies, just having that approach to uh, your career. I've interviewed a lot of CEOs who had pretty prominent positions, uh, but took lateral moves, even a demotion to get experience that they thought um, would really help them over time. Um, you know, you talk to these CEOs and they really, there's this reverence in their voice when they talk about employees who have a bias towards action, not recklessness, but let's do something. Mm. Let's, let's innovate, let's take some risks. And they wish they could bottle that and pass it around. 30 seconds. How much do you love what you do? Uh, the corner office is great. I've interviewed close to 200 CEOs. Um, they're interesting people. They always have such fascinating insights. It's a, it's a different side of them that I've really uh, gotten to experience. And so I always look forward to the conversations. You know, I look forward to this all the time too. People say, hi, hey, you talk to this different people, but you ask similar questions. You're not getting the same stuff back. Right. You're not getting the same stuff, right? Right, exactly. Listen, the name of the book is The Corner Office, Indispensable and Unexpected Lessons from CEOs on How to Lead and Succeed. The author is Adam Bryant. Um, good stuff. Check it out every Sunday in the New York Times. Uh, you know that newspaper, The Gray Lady. Thank you very much. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Yeah, appreciate it. This was fun. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET Studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by... Adler Aphasia Center, empowering, enhancing, and enriching the lives of people with aphasia and their families. The Russell Berry Foundation, Fedway Associates, Inc., J.H. Cohn, Accountants and Consultants. We turn expertise into results. And by PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.
One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.